Hi everybody, so in this last video I realized in ending the last, uh, the previous video, part three, that I had to make clear what was input and what was output. So we're here in the Bateman 1988 TIC trace element data. And what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these rows and we're going to sort them based on decreasing silica content. So data sort and then silica is in column O and we don't need column K so I'll just get rid of that one and I want to sort largest to smallest. It doesn't have to be that way. So here we have the highest silica content at the top and then the lowest silica content down at the bottom. So these bottom five or so, I'll just put these in red font, that's our input. These are the most mafic things that we see in the Tuolumne intrusive complex in Yosemite. And it's by fractional crystallization that we think we can possibly relate those to everything with higher silica content from 61% up to 74%. So the way we're going to test that idea is through the trace element modeling that I just showed you. Now, after sorting this, I realize I've got a lot of rows that are blank. So I'm going to get rid of all of these, and you can do the same. So notice there's only, there's no trace element data. There's K2O, but we don't have rubidium, thorium, uranium, or anything else. I'm just going to get rid of that row. I'm doing this because... Excel has problems when it sees blank rows. It gets confused very easily. It doesn't know what to do. Uh, it doesn't understand that with blank rows, sometimes you can just skip them. So I'm going to go through after sorting and just delete all the blank rows. And you can do the same because they are data that we do not need. We just need the trace home data for the stuff that we're going to do. So what else we're going to do um, is we can make some plots. I'm going to get rid of the color coding out here. And uh, we can make some plots of just the compositions themselves without modeling. Now, again, we want more normalized. So I'm back in trace element 250T. I'm going to grab the element and the more compositions, which are these two rows here, rows two and three. So I'm going to take them, and I'm going to copy them up here. And I think I told you earlier that you'd have to rearrange these rows. You don't have to. I've, I think I've saved the one. Uh, I've uploaded the one that is saved where I've put these in the same order. So we have more compositions here. And we have the natural uh, Tuolumne intrusive suite compositions here. And I'm going to just paste these labels so that they line up here. Rubidium, thorium, uranium, etc. Etc. Make sure they line up. So for more normalization, I'm going to make a ratio. I'm going to take the ratio of the rubidium of this sample and divide it by uh, mid-ocean ridge. And when I fill down, I don't want that row two to change, so I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of it. But I do want to be able to change the column and on the numerator, I also want to be able to change the row. So if we fill down, we now have the more normalized compositions. And you can make a chart where you can plot all of these into one single trace element chart. Um, you might be able to do these all at once. I've tried earlier. So if I select the... Oh, I, I forgot one thing. I have to... I want these elements in a certain order. So for rubidium, that's number one. Thorium is two. Um, so my x-axis is going to be this ordering from one to 18 for all these elements. What I'm going to do is to try. I'm going to see if it works. It, in an earlier attempt at a video, it failed. I'm just going to take a whole bunch of these Tuolumne samples and see if I can plot them all at once. Now, I expect to fail but I'm showing you this in case you can try it on your own computer and see if it might work. I can already see it's got some weird numbers on the horizontal axis, so Excel doesn't know what we're doing. This should be 1 through 18, 
but instead I'll enlarge these so you can see them. It's got uh, 0 through 90. That, that doesn't make any sense. So Excel doesn't know what we're doing or why we want to do it. So I'm just going to take this one at a time. I'll take the, the elements in their order, 1 through 18, and I'm just going to plot this first sample. So now I'll go back to Insert and make the plot. And that looks familiar. That looks like what we had before. And we'll make the font a little bit bigger so that we can see it. And so you can see now it's correctly plotted the elements in order 1 through 18. It goes out to 20. We don't really need that. And we can change this to a logarithmic axis. And then I'll select on the points. For the points, uh, we want a solid line. And you should make this horizontal axis cross at 0.01 or 0.01. Make it uh, 0.001 or maybe even less. That's pretty low. Oh, it didn't take it. it. Didn't like point. Oh, it didn't like my. Um... All right. So Excel's being a little bit stubborn. It's not going to follow all our instructions. But anyway, you can add additional data. We could do this. Hopefully, you don't have to do it one at a time, and you'll be able to use the shortcut that I showed earlier. But edit, paste, special. And then we can grab 1 through 18 again, and then take the third row down. As you can see, this is kind of tedious. Um, but you might be able to trick Excel into doing them all at once. But you should plot all of the samples except for those that are down here, the bottom five that have the lowest silica contents. These guys with uh, less than 60% silica, I've painted red. Those are the ones that you don't have to plot. Those are your input, and it's these compositions of higher silica rocks that are, that are outputs. This is what we want to try to predict. Uh, we will uh, allow these to have different colors and different um, symbols, if you like. Uh, but when you plot the model, so let's come back to this uh, trace element plot here. The model is not, a, we don't want to confuse the model calculation with an actual rock sample. It, these are calculated values. Now, we did use a rock sample to try to predict the model, but it's still a calculated liquid composition. So I'm going to go to marker, and for marker, I want none. So it'll just be a solid line, and then I can make the markers on these a little bit more obvious. So for the marker options, we'll make it maybe 12 point instead of 5 point. So things with dots, those will be our natural rock samples, and then the solid lines will be our model composition. So try to use that. And then try to find a starting liquid and a percentage of minerals that'll try to match the range of compositions that we see here in the Tuolumne Intrusive Complex as closely as possible. I'm going to put one more composition here. Um, I've plotted some of the high silica guys already. I'm going to come down here and plot one of the low silica guys to see if it's really much different in composition. So edit copy. And we paste it. Yeah, it looks like some of these uh, fellows with higher, uh, lower silica content actually have higher amounts of these elements here. So the ones with this, this guy in yellow has uh, maybe 62% silica. It's got the same amount of these very uh, large incompatible elements like thorium, uranium, and barium. It's, it's very similar to the high silica guys but it has higher amounts of these compatible, compatible elements like nickel, cobalt, titanium, and vanadium.
So finding the right model that where the calculated values will match the, this, this range as closely as possible will be your goal. You'll want a model that will match that yellow curve and also a model that will match these curves as well. So you'll have a couple of models that are plotted and then you'll have a range of melt uh, fractions and uh, mineral proportions that will explain these data. So that's what we're after. And uh, that's it for now, unless you guys have any questions, in which case you can email me. And if there are some general questions, I'll record another lecture to explain things further.